Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and um, remember I told you that I thought that there was a tiny chance in hell that I might have found some actual cesium-137 and cesium-134. A tiny, 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 tiny chance. But the numbers were so small that I wasn't absolutely sure and that's why I put like 50 billion disclaimers throughout the video to, to remind everybody that it's probably just a false alarm. Well, I think it probably is just a false alarm. Um, I waited until today and I ran another 12 hour test and I let the radon, <coughs> the radon progeny decay away. It's usually a smart idea to actually wait four or five days before testing, unless you're testing for radon progeny. I was actually testing for radon progeny, so I wanted to test as quickly as I could. But when you're testing for what's in the water besides radon progeny, most laboratories will let a sample sit for four or five days because as they well know, when you collect it, <coughs> it's going to often be hot right off the bat from the radon progeny. Four or five days later, you get that nice leveled out, nothing's in it but the contaminants uh, sort of thing that you get from water. So, here's the sample, double wrapped in plastic, of course. Um, I used to use beakers um, for my testing, but I've discovered actually recently that double wrapping it in plastic works a lot better. The borosilicate isn't bad, don't get me wrong, but it can cause, it cause a mild Brumstrahlung effect. What that means is that a high energy beta coming out of the um, plastic here hits the borosilicate and slows down rapidly, and as it slows down, it changes its momentum. A change in momentum means that energy has to go somewhere. Energy is conserved, it's not destroyed, it's not, you know, blown to pieces, you can't create or destroy energy. And so it tends to fly off as a uh, gamma ray. But anyhow, um, technically speaking, all the indicators that I saw are still basically there, except ironically the cesium-137 peak is actually a little bit lower, but everything else around it is so much higher that I actually basically, I would have to say that it's not there. It's hard to say conclusively, but if I were like, you know, put in a corner somewhere and people were threatening me and they were saying, you've got to tell us one way or the other, I would say it wasn't there. If you want a Boolean answer, yes or no, I would say no, it's not there. It, I would say that the chances of it in my sample are maybe one in a couple hundred. It's just so much smaller than the other peaks. Now the problem with this is that when you're when you're looking at a reasonably hot sample, especially something right on progeny, you have energies all over the place. Now you get concentrations, statistical concentrations, of uh, where the energies go. But you also get other energies, and here's the reason why. When a gamma ray comes flying into the detector with a set specific energy, if it perfectly, perfectly intersects an atom and causes a, 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 a fluorescence and you, you pick that up, a scintillation, perfectly, then you'll get an absolutely right on the, right on the, uh, right on the money uh, read and you'll get a perfect line of energy. But that doesn't usually happen because as it's going through, it doesn't hit too much typically, but it'll reflect a little bit off of something, it'll maneuver past something else, it'll knock an electron free, and as it, as it, as it, as it angles just ever so slightly, it loses a little bit of energy. Now, a photon cannot slow down it must move at the speed of light. Well, that's not really true. It must, meet at, meet at the, it must move at the speed of light within the medium that it's in. There's actually... Speed of light's actually a little bit slower for certain mediums, but the absolute speed of light, of course, remains the same. Anyway, it can't slow down, really. So what it does is it loses energy, and its wavelength broadens. And as a result of this, you end up with, instead of that perfect peak, you end up with a little bit less, or even sometimes a little bit more you get that shift. Additionally, um, you can have things like a, re a recoiling of the actual gamma ray, and you get like a backscatter. You get like a, an atom, and the, the photon hits it, and kind of like goes backwards almost. I mean, that's not quite exactly right, but um, sort of. And basically put it, it deflects at various angles, and if it deflects at a really heavy angle, it can massively shift. And if anybody's ever looked at Compton scattering before, you can actually see that on a Compton photo peak. Um, and when it scatters, it can be hundreds of electron volts off. And so you can get little peaks here and there, depending on how everything is working mathematically. And so the idea that you can, over a long period of time, get little tiny false peaks, I mean little tiny ones, we're talking like 20 or 30 counts, that is quite possible. And that's, that's something I normally try to ignore, unless I see a bunch of them together that form a, kind of like a fingerprint, which is what I saw here. But statistically speaking, Statistically speaking, it can happen. I mean, four people could be walking down the street and all drop dead at the same time of a heart attack. It's statistically improbable, but it's not impossible. And this one's a little bit more, more probable. 
So I don't know how to call this one. I'm still going to say probably there's nothing in it, but I'm going to keep searching. I have gotten 130 pounds of lead. It is on the way. Um, these are bars of lead. I'm going to produce a video because I used uh, um, I used a little bit of CAD design to actually make myself. Hey, my cat's trying to get in my window. Um, I I have um I have a cat. Come here. I'll show everybody on YouTube. He helps me with my lab stuff. He's my lab partner. Are you a lab partner? You are an underpaid lab partner. Well, anyway, um basically put, I'm going to uh, put up a video showing my 3D design of what the new detector setup is going to be. It's going to uh, shroud the detector in two inches of lead now as opposed to one inch. Perhaps three if I can fit enough around it. And that should work out a little bit better towards blocking out some of this annoying background. You like my breath, don't you? He likes my breath. If I breathe in any of you, you'd probably pass out. I just ate Chinese food pork from like a Chinese food restaurant and coffee. My breath should be actually slightly more deadly than the cesium. Well, there we go. <laughs> uh, that got him. You want to breathe my breath? Nope. <laughs> he doesn't want to come anywhere near me. But anyhow, so science must stand up to even itself. That means that no matter what I think I see, I must be able to prove it again. I must be able to even possibly disprove myself. Because that's proper science. And unfortunately, proper science is often not practiced these days. But um, my, my stuff needs to be able to stand up against itself. And if a day later it doesn't, then a day later it doesn't. And that's just the way it is. That is proper science. Don't let your ego get in the way. I don't have an ego anymore. I long lost my ego. Anyway, I have a new experiment I'm doing, by the way, too. I'm going to put some metal plates out like this. And see this, this rust? I thought about cleaning it off, but it occurred to me this rust might be a good thing. This rust might be a good feature, this oxidation. I'm going to put these outside because it's going to rain in just a really short time. A couple of these plates. And I'm going to see if uh, the plates and the water have some kind of an effect. I'm trying to figure out what could possibly radiochemically account for the fact that your car seems to have um, uh, 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 higher readings than the regular rain. It makes no sense. I'm actually going to use a, I'm going to use a Geiger counter for this, actually, for doing the testing initially. I'll probably throw it in the scintillator, too. Um, Geiger counters are great for showing the amount of activity you're getting something uh, from something proportionally, mind you, not the exact activity. Uh, that's, what they're, that's what they're really good for, and that's using them correctly. You should use your tools for what they're good for. You know, you don't hammer a nail with a spoon, right? So anyhow, um, um, oh, and just for giggles, I thought I'd show you one other little thing. This is a one nano curie potassium potassium source. It has exactly, uh, well, almost exactly, I guess, 37 decays per second of potassium 40. Isn't this possibly the lamest thing you've ever seen in your entire life? You could actually rip this open and pour it on your food. <laughs> but anyway, um, so my readings, they're not wrong, but they had data in them that was probably the result of happenstance and statistical inaccuracy. It occurs, and it's perfectly normal. That's why whenever I see something that doesn't have a large photo peak on it, because you see a large business photo peak, it's kind of obvious what it is, but whenever I get some little tiny thing that could be something, I test it, and I retest it, and I retest it. Because if it's really what it is, if that's really what it is, it needs to be able to stand the rigors of testing repeatedly, every single time. Because if it can't stand the rigors of testing then I can't call it factual, can I? And that's why I put a disclaimer on it, because of this. And I thought it was important for you all to see this, because I want you to see that science is like this. This is how science is. But this has been Tom from anti-proton.com, and um, there you go. Drist, are you in my chair? 
How am I supposed to do scientific research when you're in my chair? What kind of a cat are you? You performing cat scans or pet scans or anything like that? I think you might need to leave. I think you're in the wrong place. You think you're in the wrong place? What a silly cat. You've probably come in here to conduct experiments and high science, haven't you? Experiments and high science. That's the kind of thing a cat would want to do. Anyway, say hello to YouTube, Drist. Good kitty.